from him in the form of Laugh. something. Bingo. He kept laughing when he was reading the paper before he actually said it. He was reading it and then he continued. There were a lot of giggles, weren't there? And that was almost how that stutter released itself as a giggle quite a lot, didn't it? Um, the giggles are perhaps a sign of what? Bingo. It really does make him look like a little nervous boy. And if we think back to the job interview type stuff, think back if you yourself were someone who got the giggles occasionally during that process, and there were some. That is perhaps what you reveal. A little bit of inner nervousness, maybe. Anything else, good or bad, Mr. Birch? Let's come to you. I don't know, the, other than the fact of his head turning up and down around like an owl, he was a bit stiff, he was a bit stiff, he just didn't move around, he was just in one position. Love it! He didn't move. When I present to you guys, I'm doing it right now. I'm always moving about. Why am I always moving about? Why is it a good... Yes, I'm a fidget ass and I've got fleas. But why... <laughs> why else might I be constantly moving about? Sorry? Keep our attention. Yeah. I'm saying words that appeals to your hearing sense, and if I'm moving about the whole time, there's a different thing to look at the whole time, yeah? Which appeals to your sense of sight. So it's that more than one dimensional thing going on there. So moving, great suggestion. He shouldn't move. Keep going with the whole senses thing. He stood still, he spoke, which got the attention of our sense of hearing. What else could he have done which appeals to other sensory things we have? Yeah, in the background he might have had a PowerPoint or something covered in photos of these Komodo dragons and whatever else he talked about, which then appeals to our sense of sight. Keep going. Is there any more dimensions he could have added in a sensory way? Get some seawater. <laughs> Keep going with that theme. Oh, it's it's nice. Nice. Sorry? It's nice. Keep keep going with the whole bring some seawater stuff. Theoretically, I suppose he could. Yeah, could it might have been difficult to bring an animal in, granted. But if he had have done... Bingo. Then there's something that appeals to your sense of touch, isn't there? You could have stroked the Komodo dragon or whatever else. Yeah? Eh? He's trapped. He's trapped. He's 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 um, so yes, he could have actually brought in a prop, as we call it, a one of the animals to to touch and feel. Keep going with the whole sensory thing. Is there anything else he could have done? Well, that's a sign. Is it smell? It had he brought the animal in, not only would we have been able to touch it. We would also, no doubt, have been able to smell it. That's four senses now being appealed to. Keep going. Is there another? I don't know where you're going. Taste. Taste. Can eat it. Or eat the dog. Yeah. Okay, granted, it's quite yeah. difficult to say ego yeah, nipples, yeah. have a Komodo dragon chop. Tuck in, big boy. It's yeah, good you for can, you. Can eat How about we ask him to bring in You can. Maybe oh, try a bit of octopus. Yeah. So he could actually have appealed to all five of our biological senses. And then suddenly, what was maybe quite a boring presentation, because it was one dimensional, only one sense being attracted, was then, would then be quite an interesting one. Because all five senses are being targeted. Everything, yeah? Uh, the best presentations are the ones that appeal to more of the senses. If we're in the business of taking notes in this session, that is perhaps note number one. The more senses 
you appeal to in your presentation, the better it is. If you're doing a presentation about a plumbing firm, bring in some pipes as a prop for us to touch and feel and get the smell of and that kind of thing. I don't know about you, I don't want to touch anyone else's pipe. A prop. You touch my pipe there? Only in your dreams, mate. Anything else from anyone else, good or bad? About Lumbe. He didn't keep the, the same tone of voice. Yes, I mean he was quite as a mouse. He didn't keep the same tone of voice, as in, um, instead of keeping up one single level of tone. Yeah, it'd be better than that. No, no, because if, yeah, you, if you go louder, then. It'd be no, a but bit by, raising your, by changing the tone and pitch of your voice, it grabs the listener, listener more by just having that one robotic no, no, voice no. which can keep going on. I've done it five on. times already in this session where I've changed the pitch of my voice from something down here to something a bit higher. And every time people who were previously involved in their own little conversation stopped their own little conversation and were suddenly concentrating again. So Mr. Walls has a great point. If you change the tone, the volume, the sound, the pitch of your voice all the time, you are suddenly a more interesting person to listen to. He he said, that. Yeah, he said that the other way around. Yeah, I think he did good. the first time, but that's what he meant. Yeah, he, was, no, uh, he, he knows what he meant, so I think I know what he meant. <laughs> Anything yeah, else, right. good or bad, about Lumbay? Let's think back to the very beginning of his presentation, the facts about animals. A couple of times during those facts, the audience, not only in the room, but you guys also, did what? Switch off. No. Something positive. Well, engaged. Uh, How did they show they were engaged in a couple of those facts at the beginning? Ask I questions know. about it. Later on they asked They're questions. They laughed about it. Bingo! They loved. Therefore, he appealed to another sense, which humor. is not a biologi biological one. It is the sense of humour. Bingo. <laughs> At the very beginning of the presentation, a couple of his facts made the audience laugh. Straight away, he's got what? By making them laugh at the beginning. He's got it. Right away. By whacking in something that makes his audience laugh at the start, he's got them. He's got them where he wants them. So maybe generally the presentation wasn't brilliant. Mr. Hall, can you put it away? Maybe generally it wasn't brilliant, more good, bad things than good, but he did do some pretty good things in it, which is why he passed. Yeah, it's more bad than good. Maybe. So shouldn't the effect? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, what about you? Um, <laughs> We're going to do that, maybe. <laughs> yes, possibly. So there we go. That was not because I wanted you to do something like that. It was because of the revealing of this good and bad stuff. Little pointers of good things you can do, particularly along those sensory lines. That's what I'm after. The second clip I'm going to show you is one very, very much closer to what I'm after from you guys. Your presentations will be about this business that you're supposed to be setting up in this subject. And what you're about to see is a presentation from a guy wanting to set up a business in something. Therefore, it is a lot closer to what I'm looking for from you guys. It's from the TV show... Dragon's Den. Of course. <laughs> the bloke that you're about to see goes by the name of Levi Roots. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Mr. Roots. Are we all familiar with the name Levi Roots? Yes. Reggae, reggae, sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reggae, reggae, sauce. Oh, God no, damn it. That was the most memorable one. Yeah. What? Bigger. What should I do? He's from Jamaica. 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 You're from Jamaica. Is that? There was a ginormous difference. Reggae Reggae Sauce was his business idea. He took that business idea onto Dragon's Den and now Reggae Reggae Sauce is everywhere. Every supermarket sells it. McDonald's use it. Subway uses it. Each one of these companies, the supermarkets, McDonald's, 
Subway, all of them will be paying him a whole heap of cash to sell his product. Therefore, Levi Roots right now as we speak is a multi-casquillionaire. That's like beyond millionaire. Yeah, it's one of like a few extra noughts on the end. Yeah, and it all started with what you're about to see. His pitch on Dragon's Den. Him attempting to start the process of being a casquillionaire. During during this clip, gentlemen. I'm going to be making various notes on what is left of this white page. Down this side, I'll be writing stuff to do with the sensory stuff he does. And on the other side, I'll be making notes about his actual presentation and what stuff he talks about in the order that he talks about it. And what I'd like you to do whilst watching this presentation is copy the notes that I make on there because what you're about to copy will essentially be the structure of your own presentation. Which one we Okay. Yeah, Everything that's about to appear down here. But here we go for the next 10 minutes or so. It is over to Levi's presentation. It's been successfully selling his product locally for 15 years, but thinks the time is right for expansion nationwide. He's asking for an investment of £50,000. Get ready, note takers. Your first thing is coming. Put some music in my food for me. I do this on reggae, reggae sounds. I like reggae, reggae sounds. It's so nice. I have to name it twice. I call it reggae, reggae sounds. First thing to make a note of is that. Reggae, reggae sauce. The 